Keith Libby was born in Springfield, Massachusetts. Much like many others in Libby's generation, he became a hard worker at a young age. I was a dishwasher in Springfield, Vermont. My father was the chef, and I got stuck doing the dishes. Being a hard worker came naturally to young Libby. He had a lot of inspiration from his parents. His father, Richard Irwin Libby, was a hard-working chef and baker for as long as Libby can remember. As for Libby's mother, Ruth Johnson Libby, unfortunately, she passed away when Libby was only seven years old. She died of a brain tumor. 27 years old. All I know is she went to the hospital and died. I don't know if they, you know, if she was in or not. That was only seven years old. Although Libby's family was always busy working, he still found time for fun with his three siblings. We used to go down to a lake, steal boats, and we'd row around to down in uh, Eglon, Mass, where we lived for a while. We used to go through the tobacco field. Three years after the death of his mother, Libby and his family, now including his stepmother, Edith Ellis Libby, moved to Springfield, Vermont. My father was looking for work and he became the baker of the Springfield Bakery. Libby maintained a job from the age of 10 throughout his high school career. I became a salad chef. <laughs> I had two jobs at the same time, one on Main Street and one out at Best Western. Worked in two different restaurants and went to high school at the same time. When Libby was 15 years old, he met his wife, Linda Corbett. Yeah, we'd go out. You know, I had all kinds of money back then. Lived like a king. <laughs> now you can't buy nothing, but back then, nickel was a nickel. You could use it. In the year 1967, Libby graduated high school and was drafted into the Vietnam War. In the Army. I didn't want to go in the Army. <laughs> Enlisted in the Air Force. Became a jet mechanic. Go swimming in the binjo ditches. The sewers are about six feet deep. After my year in Vietnam, then I got transferred up to Japan mm -hmm. for 18 months. We had a three bedroom house over there. Lived like kings, because everything was cheap. First we brought the whole base back to New Mexico. We were living there in New Mexico. And then we took the base and moved the whole thing over to Germany for 30 days. Went over there, we hang a nuclear bomb, drop it off. In the year 1968, Keith and Linda were married. After the war ended in 1972, Libby came home to America in need of work. Went back to the Benmont Mill because they had to give you your job back after you left. Worked on the presses, clean the presses and mm -hmm. put all the inks in and make the different kinds of paper. By 1973, Libby and his wife welcomed their first baby girl, April K. By 1989, Libby and his wife had all four of their daughters, April, Jolene, Maranatha, and Samantha. Throughout the years of Libby's developing family, he had many different jobs. Well, I worked at, uh, actually it was called Petco. So we had the Dairy Queen, we ran that. Plus had our restaurant in Shaftesbury. And that's when I was working at Dunkin' Donuts. I became the baker first, Ken Johnson, so there was two of us, and then we turned around and we bought it, me and Kenny, we became partners and we owned it for a few years. Then I went to the banner, delivering okay. banner, doing this, doing that, and I became a cab driver and drove cab for 20 years. Although the majority of Libby's time was spent providing for his family, his family still found time to take a yearly vacation to Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. I went to Hampton every year, just walking the strip. I never go in the water, it's too cold. I walk the beach once in a while. I've always wanted to run a motel. I always buy one down here, but we have no money, so we ain't gonna do that. By the year 2005, Libby's family had grown significantly now having eight grandchildren in the mix. Out of all of the jobs you have had in your life, which one did you enjoy the most? I did enjoy baking. I liked when I was driving the bus, too. How do you feel the work world has changed throughout your working life? Well, they've gone to computers. Mm -hmm. I think that's ruining the world. People are not using their heads. 
or their body for, you know, shoveling, digging a hole or something. They let a computer do that. If you could go back to any moment in time, when would it be and why? It would be back into the 50s, even though I wasn't not even a teenager yet. I would have liked to have been back then as, you know, a teenager. Because mm -hmm. the music was good. The cars were nice. Mm -hmm. The babes were our idea. <laughs>